why did you even bring this Jixus Thou versus a ZH2? Dude, what, what come are we on, doing man. Today? It's got the K5 motor in it. Everybody keeps telling us the K5 motor is the best motor ever. It's so I mean, good. It's yeah, really it runs good. on 90 pump octane, right? That's how that's how good it is. I mean, it's still making 150 horsepower, man, and you only have to pay $11,000 to get this thing. I think you way overpaid for that motorcycle no, I, over there. I think you get what you pay for with the Jixus Thou. Nah, yeah. man, dude. I mean, it's so much bike for the money. You can go so fast on this thing and really just tear it up on it. It's a great motorcycle. Yeah, but in the hyper naked category, wouldn't you want something with like some pizzazz, a supercharger, a cross plane crank, a giant V twin? K5 motor, bro. I mean, this, <sighs> this is the best motor ever put know. in a motorcycle. I Come on. I think we got to ride these things and figure it out today. I, I'm not convinced about this Jixus Thou. I'm, it, this thing's going to change your mind. I'm sure about All it. <laughs> bring in Josh. We'll bring the Suzuki boys in here. We'll figure this out, I guess. <laughs> Let's get into it today. Alrighty, folks. The premise of today's video is comparing the bottom dollar hyper naked bike you can buy versus the not so bottom dollar ZH2 over here. And we want to find out if it's actually worth it to go out and spend like Ten thousand more dollars on this bike versus this one because you can get these for stupid cheap right yeah so we were actually doing a little bit of research on this because we wanted to make sure that we had the right numbers and from the factory you can buy this at eleven thousand ninety nine dollars which that's already crazy low for hyper nakeds the next step up is your mt10 at about thirteen thousand bucks but if you want to go with old new stock or even slightly used, you can get these as low as eight grand, which is crazy cheap for a hyper naked motorcycle. Yeah, if you want to maximize your dollar, the Jixus is kind of hard to beat. Uh, we also got this bike off of Twisted Road. This is not a bike that we bought or anything like that. We rented it off the platform, so hit the link down below and check out how you can get a free day of riding using our link. But now I think we should take a closer look at the Jixus and see where Suzuki cut corners and how they actually made this bike so darn cheap. Spoiler alert, it's using a bunch of old components. So let's take a look. All right, guys, we're gonna start off with the Jixus Thou. We're not even gonna cover the ZH2. If you wanna learn more about the ZH2, we have plenty of videos about it. Go and check out those to see the specs and all the relevant information about that bike. Let's take a look at this motorcycle here. So we're working with Suzuki's tried and true K5 platform engine here, 998cc inline four, punching out 150 horsepower. 150 at the wheel with 80 foot pounds Wait, 150 at the wheel? That's what they claim is 150 at the wheel, baby. That, that's, that's a lofty claim to be mm -hmm. at the wheel. Uh, I highly doubt that, but we'll see. Um, you know, I'm already clocking when I'm looking at this bike that it actually features the same dash as an SV650, one of the mm -hmm. newer gens. And again, that's where Suzuki's gonna cut corners here. Front end suspension I'm noticing is not anything Showa or Olin's or anything like that. It looks like a fairly standard adjustable. However, front suspension setup looks to be about a what? 46 mil fork? I can't see. Yeah, 46 right fork, there. I don't know. Uh, radio mounted brakes, which is great to see on here as well. Actual radio pull master cylinder too. You don't get the cool round res cover though. That's a bummer. You don't get the cool little Yeah, little I thought res. that was kind of strange. It looks like one right off the Z650 almost. Uh, honestly, it, may, it might be. Might, might have be. come right out of the same factory. Yeah. No quick shifter on this bike. Nope. No uh, rider modes. Nope. Um, no TFT. Nope. No... What else? Well, you do have adjustable traction control. So mm. if you want to get yourself, you know, some nice power skids or something, you can do that. You can turn traction control off on this motorcycle. Yeah. Uh, but really, in terms of rider modes, it's it's all down to this. Yeah. Um, it's it's a very simple platform because they they're not trying to make anything cable crazy throttle. special. Yeah. This looks just like the Boost's cables. Yeah. I mean. You can, you can even hear it moving the throttle bodies, which is something that's rare on bikes like this nowadays. So if you yeah. actually want that feeling of controlling the motorcycle, this is really probably the most raw hyper naked out there. That's true, yeah. And as we mentioned, K5 derived frame as well. So this is kind of from an older pre-2015 Jixxer uh, 1000 type of motorcycle. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, not anything bespoke or fancy for this one. Suzuki definitely knows how to build a platform and then literally use it until it runs into the ground. Um, it's kind of what they're known for at this point. <laughs> Uh, and that's kind of all you're really getting on this bike. It's relatively simple. Um, and a lot of you might look at something like that and be like, 
actually, I like that a lot. And it's probably why Suzuki has had some success with this motorcycle because not everyone wants TFTs and rider modes and all this crazy stuff, you know? People want a simpler bike maybe, right? So. Yeah, I mean, this is a motorcycle that it it's just and motorcycle, it works. You have, you know, the same adjusters that you have on all of your basic motorcycles. So say you came up from R3, Ninja 650 into something like this, go, following that standard progression, you look and you see you got your same barrel adjusters here, same barrel adjusters there. I mean, any skill that you've learned on an other your other beginner bikes, you can take and put right into this motorcycle and run it without having to really change anything aside from just, again, moderating that throttle hand. Mm -hmm. And so, wet weight? Four. 456 pounds. So it's almost 100 pounds lighter than the ZH2. Yeah. And it's right in line with the other hyper naked bikes in the category, MT10, uh, some of those other motorcycles. It's a lot heavier than a Super Duke, but the Super Duke is very light by a hyper naked standard. Yep. Um, so yeah, let's get this thing on the road, see how it compares and see how it rides. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, Jixus Thou test. Now, Spite rode this bike out here because, you know, he likes riding his KTM. He likes riding bad bikes around, so. <laughs> <laughs> Figured I'd let him tackle this one first and give my raw impressions. So you're already riding this thing around. What can you tell me about it before I jump aboard? It's a motorcycle. It's got two wheels. It's got a throttle. It kind of goes forward. Um, yeah. The SV650 dash is hilarious. This is the same cluster as the SV652. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I would say it's an extremely rideable motorcycle, which is motorcycle industry term speak for, it's a little underwhelming, is my good. honest opinion. I, good throttle. I mean, you, you gotta love a cable throttle, right? It's just, mm -hmm. it's funny. I do hop on this motorcycle and I instantly feel like it's alive. <laughs> You know. Yeah, that's a bit of a different riding experience than this, I, I'd have to imagine. <laughs> just a teensy bit loud. All right, we're just doing the big loop. Oh, does this have Suzuki's like anti-stall thing where it kind of increases the revs? Yep. It does seem like it does that, that's cool. That's a good tech. Let's go. Now, the first thing I noticed is right off the bat between the ZH2, because we're not doing just the first ride on the Jixus, is, uh, Torque. <laughs> yep. Uh, the the Z just punches from zero RPM. It just wow. You know, it's it's crazy how much torque it has. Yeah. No matter what you do on this motorcycle, it has torque. Yeah. Top end, low end, middle range, it's everywhere. Yeah. Versus this bike. Yeah, it's a super. Honestly, it's a lot more subtle and composed than I thought it would be. Uh, it's, yeah, like every other inline four, just buttery, buttery smooth. And this K5 has been through so many iterations that I would be shocked if it wasn't buttery smooth. Uh, we unfortunately now have some traffic, so I can't quite feel what the bike is supposed to be like. Now, I didn't see what tires were on this thing, uh, the make and model of them, but uh, I do know that it's on some pretty road biased, very wet weather biased tires. They look like a Continental or something. Uh, so I, I don't. A Metzler. So I'm yep. not, I don't feel a huge kind of like, you know, flick over side to side, but I'm not going to attribute that directly to the handling of the bike necessarily. I think it's really the fact that these are kind of worn in, you know, squared off road tires. So believe it or not, those tires only have 300 miles on them. Wow. Never mind then. <laughs> That's just, <laughs> they're just bad then. <laughs> those are, that is some fresh meat. We were supposed to film this last week, but the guy picked up a nail in the tire. Yeah. So, uh, one thing I already noticed with the bike, and this isn't due to the bike, it's due to the owner. I despise these levers. Um, don't understand why anyone puts these things on their bikes, because they're, they're just bad, man. Like, <laughs> these levers are just bad. Yeah, I immediately, the first thing I did when I got that motorcycle this morning was I instantly threw those levers out as far as I could. Yeah. To try and get some feel back, because the... The clutch was so close to the bars, and I couldn't I couldn't yeah. two finger the brake because my pinky and ring finger were getting in the way. Yeah, mine is too. If you if you start doing anything more than like 50% brakes, you start feeling your other fingers. It's it's not particularly wonderful, I will say. It sounds completely different to the ZH2. It's got this really classic sort of inline four sound to it. It's really kind of cool, honestly. Yeah, that was one thing I noticed about it when I was goofing around with it, is that it sounds so just prototypical inline-four. Yeah. It doesn't have that sort of manic 
you know, hopped up, just cocaine addled sound that this one does. Yeah, it's it's a really kind of like flowy, you know, really mild mannered engine, honestly, which is so funny because we live in a world where supercharged inline fours are normal now. And that, so we look at a thousand with 150 horse and we're like, oh yeah, it's like mellow and easy going, you know, but <laughs> I think it is, man. Like this is a really pleasant bike to ride. I'm actually surprised. Um, and I can't get away from the fact that this thing is so freaking cheap. It is crazy cheap. Yeah. Like, honestly, if I bought one of these for 8100 bucks, I'd be like, money well spent, dude. Like, that's, that's a lot of bike for that. The, the main thing that I find is my problem with that motorcycle, the thing that I can't square myself with is the fact that it, it feels so pedestrian compared to a lot of the hyper nakeds out there. Like, yeah, it's composed and it, you know, it has a good sound, but it just doesn't feel special. You know? I think for me, the thing that I really want to see is, because uh, I'm noticing what you were saying about how, you know, mid-range, trying to punch this thing out of corners, uh, not a lot there, honestly. I don't feel, I feel like an MT-10 is way faster than this bike. You have to keep that thing screaming off the top end. Yeah. Like it's, it makes all of its power really between like nine and a half and 11,000 RPM, which is a little hard to get to when you have this big box van in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit difficult to actually feel the power on it, but maybe we can go out to 360 and see how these two compare side by side in a little acceleration test. <laughs> I have a feeling that I will just super skywalk that motorcycle. I don't know. I mean, I am lighter than you and on a lighter bike, so... Uh, you knows? have so much throw to get through on that throttle. It is crazy how long the throttle throw is. I'd be curious to see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I am I am very confident today. Usually I'm like, ah, eh, maybe, but nah, I feel like I'm going to walk away with it. Again, you're on a full Brox tuned setup ZH2, so if you don't walk away with it, something has gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe the K5 is so powerful that it'll just destroy you. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Putting a lot of faith on that motor, huh? Come on, K5. I, I really like the sound, honestly. It, it reminds me a lot of the 919, actually. It's a really classic inline four sound. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a sound that we don't get all that much anymore. Yeah, yeah honestly, it's, you know, I, I remember when we first got the ZH2 and we did the exhaust and stuff, like, it's so manic and coked out, like we always say, that it's it's actually kind of refreshing to jump aboard this and you're like, wow, like I can just like get along with this bike and ride it completely normally, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not frightening at all, like not even a little bit. <laughs> frightening is this thing's middle name. Yeah. Like, I think I'd have to actually try pretty hard in first gear to romp on the throttle and, and get a nice lift out of it. But with like the ZH2, it just, it just happens all the time with it, you know? Yeah, you look at the throttle funny and then it wheelies. In third gear, I really like the sound on this bike. It's so nice. Are you falling in love with a K5 with an M4 <laughs> exhaust, man? I'm a Suzuki boy hard, man. I got a Busa. Yeah, like it's, it's decent, you know? You know, it's crazy. Normally when I see you tuck in to do a pull like that, I hear the exhaust through your cardo. I didn't hear a damn thing. Yeah, no, honestly, like, this M4 slip-on, because it still retains the cat, uh, really, really, like, quite subdued and mellow. For your regular Jixus boy, I think this is quite a, uh, you know, demure kind of Jixus. <laughs> yeah. Very, you know, soft-spoken kind of, you know, it's not a, it's not a Suzuki in the truest sense of the word, I wouldn't say, versus that friggin' thing, dude. <laughs> I feel it pinging in my helmet. <laughs> It is Bonkers. crazy the way this thing drones away. Yeah, it's so loud. You know, I am actually flabbergasted at how different these bikes are. Uh, I, I thought that they'd actually have a lot of similarities. They basically have no similarities in the way they ride. Yeah, it's, it's really... Like, this is... I thought looking at it, it was kind of going to be a bit muscle bikey, right? Because it's it's got that sort of um, rounded, lumpy you know, muscular stance, uh, it's really not. It's 
it's very much like a Sunday Roadster kind of bike, a uh, a commute worthy hyper naked. You know, I I cannot believe I'm gonna say this, and maybe maybe I'll get clowned for being a Suzuki simp at heart, but I think that this bike with 150 horsepower and this actual super bike derived frame, I personally think this thing handles much better than the ZH2. It feels more balanced, it feels more poised. I was just putting it over on the side of the tire and the ZH2 does this thing where it kind of chops a little bit and it's always like trying to rip itself apart with how much power it makes, right? But yeah. I, this thing is actually really nice on the side of the tire. I mean, let's be honest. Guys getting a ZH2, they're getting it for one thing and one thing only. They're getting it to go fast in a straight line. Yeah, ZH2 boys only want one thing and it's disgusting. <laughs> you know? Honestly, if this thing wasn't so ugly, well, you know what? The new one's not that ugly, so maybe that's a really good bike. Because that's the one thing I hate about this thing is how ugly it is. Well, is it significantly better looking? I guess we'll have to flash an image of both of them up on screen right now. I, I think the new one is significantly sharper looking. I mean, this is real. I cannot get behind this bike. <laughs> I'm looking at it in the back of this Tundra, and I'm like, God damn, dude. <laughs> it looks like a fat CB500X or something. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, it was funny because you rocked up to the shop with this thing, and I was my expectations were like bottom basement for this thing. I was like, oh, it's gonna just suck. But uh, dude, I, it's really good, and I really can't get away from the fact that I'm like, I could go on Cycle Trader and buy one of these for like eight grand. Yeah, you can get them crazy cheap. But then again, I mean, in the hyper naked marketplace, I want something that's unique. I want something crazy. I get you. Yeah. I think this is for the, again, this is for the guy or girl that is, like, solely committed to that value for money. Yes. If you don't give one iota about cross-plane sounds or supercharged bikes or crazy 1300cc V-twins, this is the naked bike to get. This thing's rad. Yeah, I mean, it, it, is, it is unbelievable what you get in that package for the dollar. Yeah. You, you can get it for the price of an MT-07. I mean, dude, come on. You can't yeah. beat that. <laughs> dude, this bike's really good. God damn it, I didn't want to like it, but it's good. <laughs> what's What's interesting about it is it's it's just like, you know, we always talk about this. We're like, we feel like bikes are getting too crazy, too complicated, too weird, you know? Like, uh -huh. this has all the fundamentals just dialed in just right, you know? Simple really cable does. throttle, simple components, just a good solid engine. Um, Man, like, God damn it, Suzuki every time, dude. Maybe that's why they haven't updated it in five years. Yeah, and what's cool about it too is the power comes in in a really subtle, supple way. So you can feed in the power coming out of a corner and not really be too worried about it blowing up on you, you know? God. I'm surprised you like it as much as, as you do. It feels, it, it's great. I mean, it's a good bike. It's, it's at 11,000 bucks, they wouldn't sell you a bad motorcycle. No, it's just, it's just fundamentally it works so well, mm -hmm. and uh, it reminds me a lot of the MT-10, honestly, where you're like, this was definitely derived from a superbike, this is definitely a superbike engine, it just happens to have handlebars. It doesn't mm -hmm. have the pizzazz and mystique of the MT-10. The MT-10 is, like, really cool, um, and I feel like that's its main competitor, but, again, you are not going to find an MT-10 for eight grand. No, you are not. Well, give me, what would you think about the ZH2 in comparison? Because you rode this around quite a bit, too. Yeah, so the thing about the ZH2 that I keep coming back to, and this is a thing that's true amongst a lot of hyper-nakeds out there nowadays, is it has, it has so much attitude. It, I like, when I think of hyper-nakeds, and I said this a little earlier, I think of brawling. You know, I, I, the bike's almost fighting you the whole time. Yeah. Uh, I feel like riding a hyper naked is meant to be kind of exhausting, almost. Yeah. Um, you get on the bike and you, you really have to fight it and get after it. And, you know, every now and again you bury the needle on it and you just go stupid crazy fast and the front just hovers on you the whole time. Mm hmm. You don't get that with the Jixus 1000. It's a lot more pulled together, which is something I wouldn't have thought I was going to say about a Suzuki, you know? <laughs> It really does feel like the adult hyper naked, whereas this is just some like, yeah, you know, crazy jacked, you know, football star from you know a high school. 
the Jigsaw style reminds me a lot of, and in it, and it makes sense because these kind of bikes don't really exist anymore. But you know, the FZ tens, mm-hmm. the you know older Ninja one thousands, like it's uh, a much more classic kind of feel. And it seems like they've just figured out that platform and that style of bike so much. Um, and again, guys, the thing I want to point out here is if you look at the frame on the Jigsaw style, I mean, this is literally like a super bike frame. This is an actual, you know. Uh, frame that you'd see on a real superbike versus this trellis frame here that uh, is, you know, much more of like a naked bike. You'd see something like this on MT-07. And this is why I say that the uh, ZH2 is like overpowered for what it is. It doesn't make mm-hmm. sense for this. Fr- this is like a Z650 frame, basically, and it's got 200 horsepower. It's it's bonkers. Um so I, I think for that reason, it doesn't work as well as the Jixus on the side of the tire and through the corners and stuff. Um, but think about what you're doing with a Hyper Naked, you know? You're, you're really just, you're goofing off on the weekend, taking it on a twisty road a little bit. I'd have that on just, a twisty road any day. But then you get on it on the highway and just open up and you want to leave all your friends in the dust. But I mean, you, you will with that thing. You saw what I did against you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm also a coward with this throttle. <laughs> I think that in the real world, there's very little that will keep up with this bike. It's extremely fast for what it is, um, honestly. Much like an MT-10 or other bikes, it, it's still super fast. But to your point, it doesn't have... I mean, it has it for us where it's like, I like the classic inline four sound yeah. and, the vi- and the feel of it. But, you know, compared to the new crop of naked bikes, it's hard to make the case for the Jixis. But it's honestly, dude, like still really good. I, I'm just annoyed that... Suzuki has made such good frames and engines that they're just like, screw it, we'll just keep making them. We don't need to change them. (laughs) And they don't. They keep winning races. So what does it matter? So here's the real question then. Do you need 200 horsepower? Honestly, no. (laughs) No one one really needs the 200 horsepower crazy top end run. It's cool to have, and it's such a fun flex to show up and be like, yeah, why don't you you take a look at that right there? Yeah, look Mm -hmm. at that. Look at my big (laughs) You know, that's what it's all about. But uh, if, like you said, if you're a responsible adult, a mature adult, that's the better bike. Yeah, it, it really is. And, and I, the best part is, too, with the money left over from this, you can pay off your credit card debts and restore your credit score because as a Suzuki boy, you have to do those things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Suzuki boys. We, we, we clown on you, but literally everyone here on Team Yami Noob except Whitney has a Suzuki. So what can you do? Uh, you just you got to roll with the punches. Yeah. Takes one to know one, I suppose. Absolutely. Well, guys, uh, we were going to do a piece of camera to wrap this up, but I liked wrapping it up this way, kind of raw right off the bike. So uh, let us know what you think about the Jixus Thou. Do you own one? Do you like them? What do you think about them versus a supercharged naked bike like this? And, uh, yeah, thanks again for Twisted Road. Got that bike on there. This is a giveaway bike, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See you later. You've made it to the end of a Yami Noob video. Did you like what you saw? Do you want to see more of it? Check it out, right here, just like magic, waiting for you. Click this little square right here. More memes, more Yami, more of my face. Isn't that great?